So hey there guys, how you doing? So you want to build a pull-up bar in the garden, because let's face it, who doesn't like working out or training outside? Maybe you want to learn how to do pull-ups. Maybe you want to learn to swing on a bar. Maybe you want to go a little bit further and you want to learn how to muscle up. Not the greatest example, but I'm working on that. Or maybe you want to learn how to front lever. Or a myriad of different pulling exercises that you can do with a bar. Well, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to take you through the process of putting some posts in the ground, putting a bar across it and creating your own pull-up bar. Okay, let's go. Okay guys, let's get on to the materials that we're going to need and the tools that we'll need to uh, put this thing up. So first of all, let's start off with the, uh, the posts themselves. Now I've only got one post here because I'm going to be attaching that post to the side of an existing pull-up bar that I've already got, got going uh, because I want to have one bar at a lower level uh, to do various other little bits, but also to create some stability because what I'm finding is with this post as it is, it wobbles a little bit, quite a bit when I'm doing things like muscle ups and such like. So I want to stabilize it. But the idea is exactly the same for you. Rather than just digging one hole as I'm going to be doing, you're going to be digging two. So you just need to double up on the on the bits and pieces that you'll need to, to fill that extra hole. But you'll get the idea. It's, it's, it's not difficult. So let's start off with the posts. Um, the posts themselves, the posts that I used, are, um, are these four by four or 100 millimeter by 100 millimeter treated timber post. This is two meters, four, uh, 40 centimeters, 2.4 meters, 240 centimeters, 2,400 millimeters. Um, what I would say is that uh, if I was just creating a standalone system again myself, um, rather than attaching bars to it either side, I would go for the 150 millimeter diameter posts or um, six inches by six inches, 150 by 150. Because um, what I found with these is that there is, a, as I said, quite a bit of sway, um, particularly if the, if the posts are, are quite high as I've got them, as I've got them here. So, um, but for me, because I'm attaching it to an existing system, that doesn't matter because it's going to be stable enough. That, that's as said. Um, so um, these posts are quite easily available and they're moderately cheap. I think they're about 20 or 30 pounds each now. Um, and available from you know the likes of uh, I don't know uh, B and Q, Wix, whatever DIY trade specialist or timber specialist you've got got near you. Um, so you'll need a couple of those. Um, and then what I'd also suggest that you get are just some little offcuts of wood. Like these things, just little bits of offcuts of wood, just to act as stabilisers when you're trying to when you're when you're looking at putting the post in place and you need things to tripod it to keep it in place. I'll show you that a little bit later on. Then what we've got, um, we've got these, these things called wall plates. These are going to attach on the inside of the, uh, of the post and then we're going to put the, the, uh, the scaffold tube or the, or the bar through that. Okay, I'm going to screw these onto the post, both sides. Now, the reason I'm doing it that way rather than drilling a hole through the, um, through the post itself. Well, for me, I've, I've tried both ways and I prefer it this way. It's easier, it's more convenient, it means you don't have to drill and, and all that sort of stuff. It means if you need, need to move it later on, you can do it. It means you can change position and all sorts of other stuff. I just prefer it that way. It's, it's totally up to you. Um, but anyway, um, so if you don't, if you don't want to uh, you know, do it this way, feel free to drill the holes and affix the tube in, in whichever way you want. Um, as far as these wall plates or these, these things are concerned, I, I purchased these from scaffold suppliers online. You can do it through eBay. Um, they're, they're moderately cheap. Uh, they cost about, I don't know, four or five pounds, even less each, two, four, four, four or five pounds. Um, and uh, yeah, you, the, the width of these things, that the tube, that, uh, so that the bar goes through, uh, I've chosen 38 mil. Now I've got a variety of different bar widths across the, the bars that I have here. I've got a 48 mil, I've got a, a 32 mil, and I've said I've got the, the 38 here. Um, and that allows me then to have a, a, a variety. And there's 42 as well. It depends, you know, what, how long's a piece of string? What do, you, what do you prefer? You know, how big do you want the grip to be? Ideally, I'd say something like 38 or 42 mil would be, would be the preferred width, the sort of stuff you find over the, over the parks, etc. But it's totally your, your own personal preference on, on that one. Um, as far as the... 
the bar's concerned, this is a piece of scaffolding pole I had left over, which is why there's already existing holes in it. But again, um, how long should it be? Well, it depends on what you're trying to do with the bar. If you want to do things where you'll need to move across the bar, then obviously you need it longer. If it's gonna be shorter in space or space is a premium in your garden, then, um, and then you have it shorter, but always make sure it's longer. Make it longer than you want the bar to be, just to, even if it's you know 10 centimeters or so, because inevitably you may make mistakes. And if you make a mistake cutting, and you've already got the, the, the posts in the ground, um, you're not gonna be able to put a bit back on, are you? So uh, just make it a little bit longer, okay? Um, now, if you need to cut it, I'll show you how to do that as well. Then, um, when it comes on to the, the hole itself, um, we just need materials to, to, to fill that hole and to keep things in place. I suggest that you, you get some stones. Um, I just have to have some pebbles left over from a gardening project. You'll need enough to fill the hole for about a couple of inches at the bottom. Um, and as far as the hole's concerned, we're, we, we're gonna get on to, to digging out or having a look at how that's dug quite soon. Um, that hole will need to be um, three times the width of the post each way so a square that so so example if the post is four inches then the width of the hole uh, all sides needs to be 12 inches like one foot by one foot or 30 centimeters by 30 centimeters if this is a 10 centimeter 100 millimeter post okay that's going to give it the the greatest um if you like uh, stability um or payoff or, or the least or the uh, what am i saying the, the, that's the optimum um width of the hole given that you want to have the, as much post above the ground as possible. As far as that's concerned, how, how much post goes above the ground as to how much post needs to be in the ground to keep it stable, what you want to be looking at there is a two to one ratio. So if you buy a, a 2,000 or 2.4 meter, if you like, um, um, post, um, a third of that will be 800. So 1,600, if you like, would be above the ground and 800 be above it, or if you like, um, there's 80 centimeters above and uh, uh, 1,600 centimeters um, sorry, I say that again. Woohoo, come on, Marky, get it right. What I'm saying is that 80 centimetres would be in the ground and 1600 centimetres would be above. So, again, it's that two to one ratio of a post above the ground as opposed to post in the hole. Again, that gives you the optimum uh, of optimising the amount of post that you have above the ground and, as versus the stability that you need to keep it, keep it there. So, you've got the uh, You've got the filler at the bottom, and, and the reason that you're going to have that in there is um, because we want to avoid the, the post sitting on wet ground. If it sits on wet ground, it's going to, it's going to rot more easily. So this just provides um, a little bit more longevity for the post while it's in the ground. Uh, then you need to be able to set the post in place with something. And what I've chosen, and what is chosen most often, is this stuff called uh, postcrete, uh, or quickcrete, or whatever you want to call it. It's quick setting cement. Basically, um, you'll, you'll fill the hole uh, with some water and you'll pour this stuff in or you'll fill the hole with this and then pour the water in whichever way around it, it best sets. Um, and then it just dries off in about 20 or 30 minutes and it really sets in place pretty solid. Um, so you can be using the bar even, even, even on that day. Uh, now, even, now, to get to the hole itself, um, we need to be able to dig it. So um, first off, I'd say... Um, there are a number of ways in which you can dig the hole. I've chosen the Pacific method, but I'll outline some of the other ways you can do it. You could, if you, you like the effort and you like putting in a lot of work, you could just dig it using a very thin shovel. All right, a thin shovel and a trowel. Um, this method uh, does take quite a bit of time, um, a little bit onerous and a little bit fiddly and you're forever digging down and pulling stuff up and, and I've tried it and no, nah, it, 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 I'm not doing it again. Um, you can buy a spade, uh, which has two, which has a, like a, a jaw to it, uh, which you push down and then you clamp it and it pulls the earth up. Um, that's, that's, a, that's a pretty good method. Um, post digger, I think they're called, post digger spades. Um, the trouble is with those, they're, they're expensive. Um, and I didn't know how many times I was gonna be doing this. Um, you know, if, if, uh, if hindsight was whatever it was, um, I probably would invest in that because I've dug one, two, three, and this will be the fourth hole. Um, but I'm, I'm pretty happy with the, with the method I've finally chosen, which is to use this thing called an, an auger, A-U-G-E-R, I think. It's a big drill, basically. Um, and uh, yeah, it's not the size of the hole you want, but the way it works is that you'll, you'll drill one, two, three, four sections, and you pull it out each time. You'll see that in operation when I do it a little bit later on. And I find that the most uh, the convenient, easiest way of doing it. Okay. Um, 
what else do you need? Um, a little bit of extras on top of that. I like this uh, this spirit level thing. I think it's well worth the investment, this thing. Uh, you put it on the post, you clamp it on there with a bit of tape or whatever it happens to be, and you can see um, the, the levels either side. So you can tell where the post is leaning back, forward, sideways or whatever it is. Um, much easier than uh, having a, a spirit level there while you're trying to hold the post and put it in place and do all sorts of other things. So again, that's, that's, that's worth an investment. Um, you're going to need a drill of some sort to drill some holes to put some screws in etc um, and put the screws in etc so you might need that if you don't have that well you can always use the old-fashioned screwdriver and a hand drill uh, whatever you know floats your boat a little bit of always have a little bit of duct tape on hand and maybe some cable clips uh, cable ties rather um, a, a sharpie do some marking etc and uh, maybe a tape measure so you can maybe be measuring things up all right so that's enough of me waffling on. I'm sure you want to see things in action now. So let's get to digging the hole. Now, here's a little tip I think you'll appreciate. If you live in an area that's really clayey, the soil's quite hard, um, or it's, it's really been hot for a long time, quite arid and dry. Um, if you water the hole um, quite extensively for maybe 10, 15 minutes or so, uh, and then leave it to drain for about half an hour, three quarters of an hour, that will soften the earth up considerably and make the drilling of the hole or the digging of the hole a hell of a lot easier. So here you can see I've laid out the dimensions of the hole, uh, 12 inches by 12 inches or 30 centimetres by 30 centimetres, which again, as I said, is three times the width of the post all the way round. The post will be sited centrally here. Um, if you're going to be using a, a larger post, the 150 or six inches by six inches type post, make sure that the hole is proportionately bigger. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to be digging that out. So let's have a, let's have a go. Let's see if the waters soften this, this ground up. Okay, now you can see we've got, I've gone all the way around. Um, trying to keep it in in one piece. Doesn't matter if it breaks up; it will it will come back together again when you plant it. Um, and now we can move it to one side. Okay, great. And there we go. Now to start the drilling of the hole. So with a hole like this, what we want to be able to do is to start off in each corner, drill down, take the the, the earth out, and then go down to the to the opposite corner, drill down, take the hole out go to the opposite corner, drill down, take the hole out, and again, repeat that. We might have a bit in the centre, can drill down, take the hole out. What I suggest is you have a bit of a bucket to one side that you can load the earth onto, otherwise it's going to repeat your trips back and forward to wherever in the garden you're going to be, be sticking this stuff. So let's let's make a start. Obviously, I'm not going to show you the whole thing. We'll be here for hours, and that's pretty damn boring, watching a hole being being bored. Uh, some of you might get off on that, but I certainly wouldn't. So I'll, um, I'll, do, I'll do a little bit, and then I'll show you the progress as and where we go. Okay. I wouldn't go down too far, maybe halfway down the drill, and then we can pull it out. That in itself is a workout in itself. And then we'll take this to one side, dump it, and off we go. Okay, so what you can see here, I've made one pass all the way around, four in each section, took a little bit out the middle, and used a trowel just to take out the odd bits. And what that's done, allow me to get down to about, you can't see it, but it's 20 centimeters. So I'm gonna go down to about 60, 70 centimeters, which is roughly, I'm not gonna to be too bothered about the extra 10, 15 centimeters that should ideally be. Um, I know from past experience then, because I'm attaching it to another post, it's already pretty firm with the structures on the other side that I don't need to go down that far. So maybe another two passes and I'm gonna be there. So I'll meet you two passes further on. Okay, hopefully now you can see that I've now dug the hole and I'm filling it with uh, with uh, pebbles down to, as I said, about a, a depth of about two inches. That, as I said, keeps the post off um, any water that builds up at the bottom of the hole and stops it rotting. So it's just extending the, the length of your, your post in the ground. You can see I've uh, dug it down to the requisite 
um, depth, which I've made about 60 to 70 centimeters, which is just about 10 centimeters short, 10, 20 centimeters short of the ideal length. But because this is a fixed to pretty solid structure going back two or three posts, um, I'm not taking it all the way down to the, the two to one. Um, because I know just from experience, I can get away with that. So what we're gonna do next, we're gonna put the post in the ground. So as you can see now, I've got the post in the ground and what I've got is the, the three supporting battens either side. I've screwed those on, two screws in each. Okay, and I roughly did that before I put the post in the ground, sort of estimating how much um, clearance I'd need, uh, considering how far it, it goes down. You could just put one screw in each and then you can just drill the hole for the, for the other screws on that batten and then just adjust it up and down, placing the screw in and screwed it in place as and where you get to that point. And then you can adjust um, uh, more precisely once you've got the post in the ground supported around with little bits of wood um, underneath each of the battens just to bring to bring the spirit levels um, level on both the the side the leveling both upright back and forward left and right also make sure when you put the post in the ground that it obviously lines up with the other post that you've got initially when you put the post the first post in the ground just make sure that's square and then you can use as i'm doing here this is like the second post of the pull-up system to to align it with that with that other post you can do that by eye you could do that with another piece of wood that goes from post to post a flat plank if you like that uh, you can lay across both sides of the post and then just angle it forward and back it's just a little bit fiddly this it could be you can do it on your own i've done it on my own obviously i've done this thing before or you could get someone to help you by holding things in place while you screw things in. So um, it's all possible there. Okay, so then we're gonna be on to the next stage now, which is to fill the hole with the, the quick creek or the quick setting concrete, I should say. Okay. Okay, so the, uh, the quick creek set is pretty solid in there. It's been there for about 20, 30 minutes, so it's, uh, that's pretty solid. But I'm gonna leave the battens on and I'm gonna leave it for a little while before I actually try and do any pull-ups or anything strenuous of it. So the next thing to do is now to measure up the bar. Okay, so do that. What I suggest you do is you get a piece of wood, something flat that you can lay across. You could use the bar to this, you could present the bar to it, but it's, uh, it's easier to use or to, uh, to get the measurements right if you use something like this, much easier to, to manipulate. So what I suggest you do, place that against the back end of the, the post that you just put in, offer it up to the post on the other side. So you've got a nice flattish type area. To make sure it's flat, you can use a spirit level just to check so you can get it absolutely, absolutely accurate. And then with your trusty uh, Sharpie pen, just mark the point on the, on the wood where the bar will come to now when you obviously offer it up with the wall plates either side inside the wall plates there is about five mil i suspect five to three to five mil on the back of the plate either side so as i said to you before you know right at the beginning of this better to have cut it longer than shorter you can always chop little bits off um, but you can't if you cut it short add bits back on so better play safe place than sorry so mark that on the bar and now we're off to go and cut the bar So here we are back again, now it's time to cut the bar. So when it comes to cutting the bar, there's a couple of methods that I know that you can use. You could use, if you want, um, a hacksaw um, and slowly grind your way through cutting of the bar. It will get through eventually, depending on the quality of your hacksaw. And if you want a bit of a workout, that's one way of doing it. However, I prefer to use an angle grinder. Now, if you are using an angle grinder, just make sure you're careful with this thing. There will be sparks flying back, and I have in the past set myself on fire. I'll admit to that, clothes have caught light from the sparks. So just make sure that you've got nothing um, that can catch fire behind, um, and uh, wear goggles or glasses just to make sure any sparks flick up. You're, you're going to be protected.
Okay, so bar suitably cut. Let's go and offer it up to see how close we've got. So let's offer it up. And as you can see, I've got about five millimeters. If I can have a look, it's about the width of the, uh, the plate itself. So I'm just gonna take off about five mils. But as I said, it's better to do it this way than the other way and being too short. Um, you've always got stuff to play with. All right, back, second time. So here we go, guys, take two. Let's see how close we've got this time. Oh, that looks pretty good. Looks damn good. Okay. So what we do now is just make sure that we've got this level. I'd say bring it down a couple of centimeters from the top just to give yourself a little bit of clearance on that. Or make sure that the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the grub screws for the scaffold wall plates are visible, not difficult to get under. So pointing maybe towards you backwards uh, underneath, there, whatever it is, and then line it up like that. And then the final thing is just to check it with a spirit level, see how close we're getting. That looks pretty damn spot on. I'll just take it up a little bit higher, just slightly, there we go. Absolutely perfect. From that point on, a little bit of balancing and trickery, we can put our first screws in. That's it. And I've also got on me, let's place the drill up there, magnetic screw holder on my wristband there. So we'll place first screw in, there we go. Excellent. Okay, take said screwdriver. Get one screw in there. There we go. We'll give this a check on the level in a moment, just to double check. Take the other screw in there. Let's see, I'm gonna plate this out. There we go. Let's get that level out again, just to check things as we go. Don't want to lose it after all this hard work. No, that's pretty damn spot on there. Excellent. Let's get one more in. You might find it easier to, to drill the hole, but it's just playing around with so many tools all at once. So I'm using the old fashioned methods, as you can see, don't always come off, but we will persevere, persevere. There we go. What I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna support that with my shoulder. There we go. Place that first one in that. And then we can adjust with a level, you just need to get two points. There we go, two points of contact in. Excellent, well done. Now, just check that level. Way, still, smack on. Luck, luck or judgment? Well, I'll leave that to you. So now I'm gonna put the other screws in and then we'll catch up in a moment. So here we are guys uh, at the finish stage. So what I've done now, um, I put the bar in place, screwed all the things in, in, in tight, I've got taken off the battens and now the just small finishing touches putting the turf back. So I've cut the turf up so that it goes around. Obviously there's gonna be a little bit left over where the post goes, but simply a matter of then just placing the, the turf back in place. There we go. Let's put that back down like that. There we go. They set down. And there, good as new, give it a good old water. And then within a, a week, two, three weeks or so, that'll take, that'll take shape. Grass is incredibly resilient. Fantastic. So, there we go. A pull-up bar in your back garden. Now, you can do your pull-ups. Obviously, this is a little bit small for me, but great for, uh, you know, practicing things like jumping muscle-ups. <laughs> or you could do pull-ups in an L-sit position but primarily I built this 
for my granddaughter. She's uh, coming up for three years old and she wanted to have a go so she could play with grandpa. So uh, look, if you've got any questions about this or uh, anything I've done here, please leave the, you know, your questions in the comments below. Um, please subscribe um, to my channel. In that way I can carry on making these types of videos. Believe it or not, they're not, about, they're not all about DIY at all, at all. Um, it's more about fitness, fitness for, for guys and girls um, of any age. Um, please support, um, really appreciate your, uh, your, your, your subscriptions and your support. So uh, till next time guys, take care and I hope you've enjoyed this.